Samsung decided to skip the Fan Edition phone in 2022. They didn't release a Galaxy S22 FE. The last time they had a Fan Edition device was back in 2021. And I reviewed it and I told everyone not to buy it because the price point of that device was pretty much the exact same price as the regular S21, which was obviously slightly better. But this year things are different because the S23 FE starts at 600 bucks, $200 cheaper than the regular Galaxy S23 and Samsung has managed to squeeze everything you need in this upper mid-range device. Now, before I begin this comparison, a quick shout out to 1Password, who is today's sponsor, because I've been using 1Password for the past little while, and I discovered that it's much more than just a password manager. Not only does it store your passwords, but it also stores sensitive documents, banking information, and even your medical records. Too many people are trying to remember their passwords or write them down, only to then forget the password they created or have it stolen from them. Also, I'm constantly switching between Mac, PC, iPhone, and Android devices. And since 1Password works on all of them, it gives me instant access to my passwords wherever I go. Plus membership comes with lots of great perks like mass email integration from Fastmail, signing in with other providers like Google and Apple, and actionable security recommendations from Watchtower. It's really affordable with plans starting at $2.99 US per month, but I'm offering my audience 50% off if you use the code MAGIC at checkout. Make sure to click on the link in the description or visit onepassword.com to learn more. Now, right off the bat, these two devices look a lot alike. Samsung wants to make sure the S23 FE fits in the Galaxy S lineup. And look, you hold these in your hand, you can tell that the regular S23 obviously looks a bit more premium. They're using the same aluminum sidings. They have different sort of textures on the side. The Galaxy S23 is a bit more glossy, it shines, it gives it a bit of an edge. The S23 FE is a little bit on the duller side, but again, it still feels very premium. The glass choices are also a bit different. You get stronger glass on the Galaxy S23. It's Gorilla Victus 2, whereas the S23 FE is using Gorilla Glass 5. The other thing to note is that the camera pumps on the back, even though they have sort of the same sensors, the S23 FE's camera bumps tend to stick out more, which will give you a tiny bit more wobble when it's lying flat on the table. Now, both devices support IP68 dust and water resistant 1.5 meters for 30 minutes, but the weight of both of these phones are different. For example, if you're holding the S23 FE, you can obviously tell it's heavier. It's over 200 grams compared to just under 200 grams with the regular S23. I mean, this is expected. You're comparing a phone that has a 6.4 inch display to one that's only 6.1. But the thing is they made these bezels so thick that I feel like the body of this phone was meant for a bigger display because a true flagship phone with a 6.4 inch display usually has smaller bezels than this, which would mean the phone would be a little bit easier to hold. In terms of button placement, they're identical on both devices. They're on the left hand side, the USB type C port obviously on the bottom. Same with speaker placement. The only difference is the location of the SIM card. On the S23 FE, it's at the top, whereas on the regular Galaxy S23, it's at the bottom. Both of these phones do not support a micro SD card. If you want that, you have to pick up the Galaxy A54. Another design quirk is the placement of the fingerprint scanner. On the S23, it's at the bottom of the phone, which happens to be an optical scanner. So it's not as secure and as quick as the ultrasonic scanner that's embedded into the S23. I also love the placement of the fingerprint scanner on the S23 more. It's a little bit higher up, which happens to be a nice place for your thumb to rest. Now the display is unlocked. The first thing you're gonna see right away is the bezel difference. Again, S23 FE, much thicker compared to the regular S23. The S23 is like the perfect one handable phone. The screen's big enough, very easy to use in one hand. The 6.4 inch display is fairly easy to use for me. Like I have a very long finger, so this is pretty much one handable for me. But if you have smaller hands, you might find this to be more of a two handable phone. Other little quirks, the front facing camera on the S23 has a silver rim around it, where it's just a black one on the regular S23. Haptics are a tiny bit different. I found them to be sharper on the S23. So if you want like 
punchy haptics, I'd go with the more expensive S23 instead. But the first thing I noticed about this display, even though they're both full HD, okay? And even though technically the S23 has a higher pixels per inch density due to the fact that it's a smaller display, for some reason, the quality of the display still looks better on the Galaxy S23. I think there's a couple of things going on. I don't know if they're using a different panel because they're both OLED. They both support 120 Hertz, but I feel like it might have something to do with the glass. It just looks a lot more punchy and vibrant on the S23, even though I have Vivid on for both of these phones. Also the high refresh rate, even though they're both 120 Hertz, the S23 FB can only go between 60 and 120, whereas the S23 can ramp up and down between 48 and 120. Now, if being outdoors is important to you, you will get a higher peak brightness on the S23. We're talking about 1750 nits compared to 1450 nits. Not a deal breaker in my books, but something I still wanna mention because some people live in very bright, sunny climates where it's always bright outside and sometimes being able to squeeze the extra screen brightness allows you to see your phone a little bit easier. Now the cameras are an interesting topic because they did change some of the sensors around. For one, if you're taking a lot of selfies, the S23 FE is now using a 10 megapixel front facing shooter, whereas it's 12 megapixels on the regular S23. And I'm actually seeing a bit of a difference. If you're looking at photos, I find that the S23 looks a bit sharper. There's more color in my face. Some of the materials on my jacket, for example, on the S23 FE looks a bit too smooth kind of losing some of that information. So they've definitely reduced the quality of that camera. So right now you're looking at the front facing cameras of the Galaxy S23 and the S23 FE. S23 FE is 10 megapixels and the Galaxy S23 is 12 megapixels. You guys let me know which one looks better and most importantly, which one sounds better. But when it comes to the rear facing cameras, the main wide lens is 50 megapixels on both and they're the exact same sensor. Same with the ultra wide lens. So you're not gonna get that big of a difference in terms of overall photo quality. But I think Samsung is doing something with the computational photography on both of these phones. Because overall, with the majority of pictures that I took with both of these devices, I always found that the S23 was a bit more vibrant and had a little bit of sharpness to it. Whereas the regular S23 FE felt and looked a bit more flat. It's weird because it really is the exact same sensor, regardless if you're using wide or ultra, it should be the same thing, but I feel like they're purposely nerfing it so that you can see a difference between a mid-range phone and a premium one. Now what is different is the telephoto lens. They're both three times optical zoom, but the telephoto lens on the S23 FE is only eight megapixels compared to 10 on the S23. Again, not seeing a big difference, except for maybe a bit more sharpness using the regular S23. As for video, they can shoot up to 8K. The S23 FE can do 8K24, whereas the regular S23 can do 8K30. In terms of 4K video, they both look pretty much identical. I'm seeing no difference on both of these devices. Even the optical image stabilization looks good when I'm moving a bit faster. Now the back of the S23 FE is very glossy. There's no frosted printing. It just looks like a greasy mess if you plan on rocking this without a case. It's also a bit more slippery in the hands because of it. The frosted back of the regular S23 hides those fingerprints like crazy. And overall, it's just a phone that's easier to grip. But in terms of performance, this is where the S23 FE defers. You're getting a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 here in North America, and that's good. Like the 8 Gen 1 is a great processor. But if you're living anywhere else, you're getting an Exynos processor. And generally Exynos processors tend to be slower, less efficient, and offer worse battery life. So if you're living in those areas, the FE might be off your list automatically. But if we're talking about general performance on a regular everyday basis, I didn't feel like one was faster than the other. If you're buying this for general stuff like browsing the net, checking your email and reading the news, you're not gonna notice a difference. If you're buying this to be some sort of maniac mobile gamer, then yes, the S23 is going to be faster and obviously more efficient because of it. But the thing is, it's not like you're gonna get more battery life out of it because the battery inside of the FE is 4,500 milliamp hours. It's a bigger battery. And I found that the battery life because of that was slightly better. Not like massively better, but slightly better. Both of these phones can easily get through the entire day without having to charge. And sometimes I was able to make it to a day and a half. The good news though, is they both support regular charging. They both support wireless charging and they both have reverse charging. 
On top of all this, Samsung is committed to continue giving these devices four years of updates and five years of security updates. So even if you buy this phone with a year old processor, you're still gonna get those updates for a long time. So here's the thing, I really like the FE. Like this is a good phone. It's a fantastic phone, especially for $600. But if you're in places around the world where it's an Exynos processor, probably not the best deal for you. Here in North America, it really depends on what you want. If you're looking at this device and you're buying it for the cameras, I'd probably just buy the Pixel 7a instead because it's $100 cheaper and you get some of the best cameras on a smartphone for that price point. If cameras are important to you, but it's not like the must have be all and end all, save the 200 bucks and pick up the S23 FE. It's a great phone, especially for its price point. But here's the thing, Samsung is constantly offering deals on all of these devices. And I bet you, you know, a little bit closer to the Holloway, Holloways, holidays, they're gonna be discounting this regular S23. And you can probably get it for a very similar price point to the FE model. Either way, I'm a big fan of the fan edition this year. If you have any questions, let me know in the comment section down below. Like the video if you liked it, subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys in the next one.